All right, welcome to another video, my friends. My name is Bijan, in case anybody is new here. And I'm going to briefly be going over a little trade recap for you guys here. Uh, another swing trade here. I haven't been really doing too many day trades myself lately. I've been a little busy. Uh, and I usually tend to do this during summer times anyways. I go on vacation and, you know, then I get into the mood of just like, you know what? Summer's kind of slow. Uh, you know, that, that's pretty much that, guys. No real reason. I just wanted to kind of address that before um, I get a bunch of emails and questions from people asking like, hey, man, I noticed you haven't really been day trading much lately. Is there a reason for that? It's just there's no reason. It's not like, oh, no, day trading isn't good right now. Uh, it's just I went on vacation myself. Usually when I go on vacation, I like to do swing trading just to kind of keep my time, uh, I guess you can say, valuable. Yeah, yeah, that's the best word to use for it. Because when I'm on vacation, I'm paying a lot of money to be at these hotels and be at these places. You know, time is a little bit more valuable than when you're just sitting at home lingering, doing nothing, you know? So I'm on vacation. I don't really like to sit in front of the charts the whole day. So I got into the groove of doing the swing trades and I said, might as well just stick it out. Uh, you know, summer's kind of slow anyways. The whole sell in May go away thing. Um, but really, there's no, no specific reason. You could have even been day trading these same kind of trades that I've been swing trading lately. Uh, you'd be perfectly fine. That's also kind of why I wanted to make a video on this. Uh, but anyways, another swing trade here, meaning that I got into it a few days ago and I held it for a few days and I closed it out. And that's pretty much that. I know I rambled a little bit. I apologize. Hopefully I still have your guys' attention here. Um, the total profit on the trade was about 7,400. Now, it only shows 3,175 here, but the reason for that is because of the fact that this, this trade was like, you know, spanned over a few days. I closed some of the trade out yesterday, then I closed the rest of it out today. Uh, so it's all over the place. Again, this is why I say I don't like to really make YouTube videos uh, on my swing trades just because they're all over the place. It's just so much more to explain. It's a lot easier when I can just say, okay, hey guys, you see this is that order, that's that order. Okay, you see here, I got in here, I got out there, and that was pretty much that. Uh, there's like a lot more that goes into it with the swing trades, but I kind of made, like I guess you can say like, uh, a ruckus with this trade on Instagram. I was I posted this on my Instagram story and I did like a little whole like song and a dance with it, if you will, trying to teach people about calculations. Uh, and a lot of people started asking me to do a YouTube video on this trade and I said, all right, you know, let me give them one. So here we are. Uh, try to follow along with me. Um, we are going to start off by telling you when I got into the trade. So I got into the trade a few days ago right here at, what time was it? I'm sorry, we had it here, 840. I had plenty of time. I mean, you can see it's August 26th right now as I'm making this video, and I had a September 4th expiration date, so we had plenty of time on the expiration. I had 15 contracts at 560 each. Now, I'm going to go more in depth with the calculations later in the video, but I'm going to do a brief one for you guys here. Uh, and for anybody that does get confused and wants to say, hey, wait, why did you calculate that? How did you calculate this? Where this? What? What? All that. We'll cover that at the end. Uh, so $560 for one contract. I had 15 of them. You do the math there. That's 15 times 560. That gives you $8,400. So the total cost of the trade was $8,400. Now, when I say cost of the trade, that doesn't mean that if we were wrong, we were going to lose $8,400. You can always sell it for a loss. That's why I always tell people have a plan. Uh, you know, my used car example, I always say you buy a used car for $8,400. You find out something's wrong with it. You found out maybe you overpaid, whatever it is. You're not going to go throw that car into the junkyard. You can sell it for a loss. Sell it for, you know, $8,000, $7,500. You guys get my point. So total cost of the trade, $8,400 here. I was in it at 8.40 a.m., which is right here. I'm going to put it on a one-minute chart for you guys. Now, I also want to emphasize this idea uh, because I also have some people that like to... I mean, people question every little thing that I do, which I mean, to tell you, it's understandable, I guess. Um, I mean, not to kind of like, you know, promote my course here, but I mean, if you just take the course, you'll understand everything behind everything I do usually. Uh, but people ask me like, hey, are you always trading on a one-day, one-minute chart? I'm not, um, but it's a lot easier for me to point out, yeah, I got in at 840 on a one minute chart and show you the precision and precise type of areas rather than on like a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart. So I just want to kind of clear that up. I don't want anyone thinking I'm crazy over here trading like four or five days period just by looking at the one minute chart. Uh, so anyways, right here is where I got into the trade and I got into the trade what I call average to light size. 
I initially was planning to maybe add in another five to 10 contracts maximum. I wasn't going to add more than 10 contracts into it. Uh, once we got above the 150 area and once I could see that we were holding above that 150 area, uh, but I did get into it at a decent position size, 8,415 contracts. That's pretty decent for me. I wouldn't consider that light size. I'd consider that average size. I wouldn't consider that full, full size either though. Um, I did want to add in. Now, the reason why I did not add in is because of this little drop that morning. I mean, it was like literally like a quick scare out, um, but it didn't necessarily scare me out of the trade, but it kind of scared me a little bit to kind of think that, okay, hold on. I, I don't know. It just instilled a little bit of a, hey, how you doing in me? And that's the reason why I didn't add into the trade. I said, okay, you know what? You're fine with where you're at. Just stay where you're at. That's good. And that's why I didn't add into the trade. So this is where I got in, 8.40 a.m. here, uh, last Friday here. And then I closed out, I'll draw that line later. I closed out five of the 15 contracts yesterday, right as we basically started flirting with the 155 area. I saw that we were kind of rejecting the 154. So I said, you know what, let me just close it out. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a full-on rejection in where I was thinking like, okay, we're going to completely reverse. There wasn't any kind of a reversal, um, but it was like, you know what, well, hey, we're here. We're at past the primary profit target anyways. This trade was from the watch list as well, so that's why if you hear me say primary profit target, secondary profit target, uh, I'm saying that for the watch list people there, uh, but this, this trade was 100% from the watch list too, uh, but this is where I closed out five of the 10 contracts, and then I held the rest overnight. And I closed it out right here. We're going to go into it on the other side here. Actually, I'll just go in and show it to you guys right there. We closed out the 5 of the 10 at 11.51 yesterday. And then the rest of them we closed out at 9.40 today. We'll come back and finish up the calculations there in a second there. So here was the 11.51 that I closed it out at. I closed out 5 of the 15. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I'm not even going to be able to put it on one chart for you guys, one screen um, to show all three of the trades on the charts. But either way, so here from basically from here up to here, I locked in some of the profit there just to be safe. You know what I mean? As I always say, no one ever went broke taking profit as long as you're doing it right. You know, you're sticking with your plan and everything too. Uh, and then this is where I closed out the rest of it. I was kind of doing a little bit of a raising stops type of a play here, if you will. Uh, just because this name is something that, I mean, it's been wild and out, guys, and it's something that has like potential to really go. I mean, especially once it broke out of this 155 area here, uh, that's kind of the play that I was playing as well. For those of you that know what's going on, hey, I just gave it to you guys. I know sometimes I kind of hold back on some of the ideas that I was seeing, uh, but you guys can kind of see and kind of get an understanding of what I was seeing there on the chart. Um, but anyways, before I start rambling, let me just put it right back to where it belongs. This is where I entered the trade. I closed some out here. I was out of the rest of the trade right here. I was kind of doing like a raising stops idea here. So obviously I had a lot more profit in it. Um, I think it was at, up at like a total of what would have been at least like $10,000 profit on this trade if I would have closed it out all the way up here. But obviously, you know, I'm not even going to go in and say that I would have done that. Um, cause you know, hindsight, you know, that's not what happened. You know, it could have been, should have been, would have been all that, you know, nonsense. But anyways, let's just talk about what was, what is, and that's what we have at hand here. I entered the trade here, 15 contracts, 8,400 was the cost of the trade. I closed out a fraction of it, you know, a decent amount, almost half of it, I guess you can say right here. I held the rest. I closed it out right up here, right around the 159 area, basically as we broke back below the 160. Uh, and that was pretty much that trade there, guys. So hopefully this was able to, you know, shed a little perspective for everybody in one way or another. Um, that's really it. I start rambling at this point. So I'm going to stop talking about like strategical things and all of that. Um, of course, it was straight from the watch list. So if you don't want to learn how to do this kind of stuff and you kind of already know how to trade a little bit, you just want to follow my trades. Hey, you're more than welcome to sign up for the watch list. Um, my little plug right there, I guess you can say. So let's go finish up the calculations here for you guys so you can see how we came to the $7,450 total profit here, uh, even though it only shows 3175 on the day. Um, let's just go finish all that up. So as, as we said, the cost of the trade, 8400 We have a few different ways that we can look at this. Let's look at the total and total, and then we'll break it down. So the total cost was 8400 we can calculate now the total amount of what we sold it for. So we sold five contracts, 
at 800 each. That's $4,000 right there. Then the rest of the 10 we sold at 1145, which is going to be 11,450. So just add the 11,450 to 4,000. That gives you $15,450. That's the total amount that we sold it for. So the way you get the total profit is subtract the cost of the trade from that total amount that we sold it for. So the total amount was 15,450. The cost of the trade was 8,400. So you subtract that 8,400 from the 15,450. And that's where you basically get the $7,450 profit that we made uh, over this trade, this swing trade over a few days here. Uh, and that, that's pretty much that, the total cost, the total everything there, the total profit. Now you can break it up for yourself in a few ways here if you want. You can basically say, okay, we could have done 10 contracts at 560. That would have been 5,600. And then I would have sold those 10 at 11,450. And you could have done basically 11,450, subtracted, you know, subtract the cost, which would have been 5,600. And that would have given you a profit of 5,850. You could have also said, okay, so we had five contracts here at 560. So 560 times five is 2,800. You can say, okay, cool. We sold the five at 800 each, which is $4,000. So subtract the cost of that miniature trade, we'll call it. The cost was 2,800. So subtract 2,800 from the 4,000 that you sold it for, and that gives you 1,200. So there's different ways you could have looked at this. If you're trading with a smaller amount of money, a different amount of money, um, you know, we saw two di two different type of trades here. Three, I guess you will. The whole entire trade, which was 8,400, we put in, sold it for 15,450, giving us a profit of 7,450. You could have thought, you know, putting it in a different perspective for you guys, you know, if you like to, you know, look at it from the used car perspective, you bought a used car for $8,400 and then in a few days you sold it for $15,450. You made $7,450 without having to be out in the sun blazing all day, going to the auctions, listing your cars, cleaning them up, so on and so forth. I just say that because I used to, you know, deal with, you know, buying and selling cars too a little bit there. Uh, you know, I just like to put these little analogies for you guys, help it, you know, be a little easier for people to understand, make it a little more relatable. So that was the main trade. Or you could have looked at the two other smaller trades. You could have said, okay, we put 5,600 in, sold it for 11,450. We made 5,850 there. Or you could have looked at the small trade, costs 2,800, sold it for 4,000, gave you a profit of 1,200. Or you could have even added up both of those profits, the $5,850 profit, add it to the $1,200 profit, and that's how you have the $7,450. I literally broke this down for you guys in like 10 different ways, so there's no way anyone can be confused on this. Hopefully, you guys were able to understand everything here and understand how options works and how you're able to do a lot more uh, with a lot less, I guess, if you will. So to kind of wrap things up, I'm going to go over the chart one more time for you guys here. This is where we got into the trade right here at that 840 time frame, right around the 147.50 area on the stock. And as the value of the stock increased, I sold a fraction of the trade at 154. Then the rest of it, I sold it at 159 area. And that was pretty much that, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll wrap it up here so I don't start rambling. That was a $7,450 profit for you guys. Uh, like I said, if you guys do want to subscribe to the watch list, you want to follow the trades and see like what I'm up to, uh, it's a list that I give out. I update it. We have two sections for it, day trading and swing trading. Uh, we have like five to 10 stocks per section. Uh, it basically says, hey, we're looking to enter the stock here. We're looking to exit here. This is the profit target. This is the risk, so on and so forth. You're welcome to join there. Of course, if you do want to learn how to do this kind of stuff yourself, you could always you know, sign up for the course as well, but I know people don't like to hear that. No one likes to be told to take a course these days anymore. Um, so that's pretty much that, guys. If you want to just basically connect with me in one way or another, I'll put the link for the website below. I'll put my social media links below as well. Who's Bijan T on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all of that. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. We will wrap it up here. And if you did enjoy it, if you maybe even learned a simple one thing, two thing, anything, be so kind. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. I don't know what else they tell you to do. Comment something nice below. Uh, and that's pretty much that, guys. We'll wrap it up. I'll talk to you guys soon.